Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So this is part two of the custom dash setup for the Wheelie CJ3B. Now if you've missed the first video, we put that first speaker louver into the dash and it turned out great. So in this video, I think we got all the talking points out of the way. We can go ahead and start working on that glove box, working on that next speaker louver. This is gonna be so cool when it's all done and put together. I can't wait to see it, so stick around. All right, y'all, so just to reinforce what I said in the first video, this is the CJ5 glove box and right speaker louver. And the CJ5 and the Willys Jeep both have this bend at the bottom of the dash. So instead of cutting all the way through this and then scabbing on that CJ5 piece, I think I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna split the difference over here on the CJ5 piece. Draw me a nice straight line right through here cut right in between these two and that'll leave this little piece of channel and about you know maybe a quarter inch or so three-eighths of an inch and then I'll graph this panel over into the Willys Jeep. The reason I don't want to cut all the way through this is I don't want to lose the rigidity of it. I don't want things to warp or get out of square so I think this is the best ideal to keep everything nice and true and I think it'll blend in better this way also.
All right, so this is where we're at right now. This turned out to be a really big hole. And I'll be honest with you, this is not for the faint of heart. I had a little bit of trouble even starting the first cut on this. So here's the panel I cut out, the piece of dash I removed. It came out pretty good. I've got all my edges cleaned up. I notched this a little bit higher than the rest to clear the upper edge of the glove box. I'm gonna try a trick on this that I like to use when I'm doing bigger panels like this. So pretty much what I'm gonna do, I've got the bottom height right where I want it, and it looks like it's gonna work just perfect with the door. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and tack the bottom in a few places, get everything nice and square, make sure everything's solid, and then I'll come through and I'll cut through this and through the dash, and that's gonna end up with perfect panel gaps and everything will line up really good. So that's what I'm gonna try. Hopefully it turns out good. All right, so I've kind of got this panel fitted in pretty close. I'm getting my edges really close. The bottom, I think, is right there. That's why I've got it all tacked on. So I'm gonna finish trimming up these corners. And the top, I'll probably have to trim this corner over here a little bit. But the way this works is I've got my bottom all flush, set where I want it. That's got my height set, everything's square. And so now, when you run your grinder in, that leaves the perfect gap like right down here. It leaves the perfect gap to do these little stitch welds. So I've got my insert in right now. I think it looks really cool. There's plenty of room in there. You actually could fit a bigger area in here, which talking about those metal ones, I think he can make those as big as I want them. So I might, when I get that metal one, get a custom one that gives me more depth in there. It's looking really good. It's coming together. I got a few, like three more cuts to make and I'll start stitch welding. I think this is gonna go a lot quicker than that one. I made my cutout a lot smaller this time and I'm forming my piece to fit the cutout. So that makes all your gaps a lot nicer doing it this method versus how I did that one over there. All right, so I got all my panel gaps right where I want them. Everything looks really good. So now it's just a bunch of little stitch welds and a bunch of patience. All right, y'all, so it's a few days later since the last time I worked on this. 
we just come out of a massive ice storm here in Tennessee. We lost power, trees is down everywhere. But I got power back on, get back here in the shop, get the wood stove going, get to work. All right, y'all, so that's as far as I'm gonna take this right now. There's a few little imperfections left here and there. The Bondo will take care of that when I do a little thin skim coat of body filler just to smooth everything out. It's gonna look great. I did end up having to take them little rubber bumpers out because if I didn't, then the grinder was gonna end up eating them up to the point that they wasn't gonna work. It was just getting in the way too much. Surely somebody makes them reproduction because unfortunately they did break trying to get them out. They were just old and dry rotted. I've got three more holes over here I'm gonna take care of and a couple little screw holes right here I'm gonna fill in. Then we'll get back over here, put the insert, the door, the catch, get everything finished up on this. We'll have this custom dash finally knocked out. I got a big mess here too I need to go ahead and clean up. All right, y'all, so I went ahead and filled in them other three holes. I ended up leaving these three. I believe these are factory holes for like your choke, governor, light switch, this one might have been at one point, but I think somebody had opened it up. So I got all them filled in. This is looking really good. This looks just as good as I thought it was going to in my head, and I'm really happy with how it's all turning out. So now that we got all this welding and grinding finally knocked out out of the way, let's go ahead and get this door insert catch put in, and we'll call this good. All right, y'all. So putting this glove box door on is nothing special. It's just a screw in each one of these hinges, bolts right up underneath this lip here. I've got the old data plate off that chunk of dash I cut out. I think it'd be pretty cool if I could take it off and just put it on that glove box. I don't know if it's gonna be too long or not yet though. I'm gonna have to take it off and see. If it is too long, I might just end up cutting it off of this line right here and just keeping these two spots. Now there's nothing unique about these. These were just a universal data plate for your drivetrain and everything. Also, I gotta take this release mechanism off of here. It's pretty simple. It's just this one screw I'm pretty sure transfer it over to this one and then the catch has these two slotted holes in it for adjustment and fortunately since this was actually used in a jeep the holes are right up here already drilled for this so i just got to find some screws and putting that so it's all pretty straightforward and ought to go together pretty quick So unfortunately, these little rubber bumpers did have to be taken out to finish grinding all this. And they were old and dry rotted and they did break. So I ordered some new ones from Kaiser Willys. They look pretty close, if not the same. So hopefully they'll work out. I'm gonna try and reuse these for now, just get everything lined back up. And then we'll put the new ones on later. I got my little rubber bumpers back in. They're actually not too bad. They probably would have been fine. Some of them did break off, but I think it's in there good enough. 
I will tell you though, those are no fun to put back on. All right, y'all, so here it is, the complete custom dash setup for the Wheelie CJ3B. Got my speaker louvers, got my glove box, inserts in, the door latch is nice and tight, looks good. Even got my original data plate back on there. I think it turned out awesome. It looks even better than what I pictured it in my head. So I did have to take a lot of paint off, patching all these holes and everything. Let me know down in the comments what you would do. I've thought about matching the patina. You know, that's something I've wanted to try. We could do all black Raptor liner just on the dash or maybe even orange Raptor liner and that'll match my wheels. So let me know down in the comments what y'all will do. Gauge setup, I'm gonna keep my big one, maybe two auxiliary ones because I think this only does maybe fuel and oil pressure or something like that. And then I've got my three switches. I'm gonna keep those and of course my emergency brake. So obviously this side went way quicker and way smoother than that side because I made some big mistakes on that side. I learned from them. This was a bigger panel. This was a lot more welding, but it went way smoother because I learned from my mistakes over there. Somebody told me one time that if you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. So don't ever be afraid to try something, even if you're gonna mess it up. So the way I like to look at things is most of the stuff I work on is broke anyways. So is there really any way to go downhill from broke? I appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it turned out great. I've got some parts on the way for other projects. We're doing this Jeep, more serious technical stuff. So make sure that notification bell's on. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any of this. I appreciate y'all checking it out and I'll see y'all next time.